Ashol Narub is the vast underground lands of the Nerubians, located under the surface of Northrend. In Warcraft 3, we venture into the depths of this subterranean empire with Arthas and Anubarak on our way to the Frozen Throne. Down there we encounter many dangers, among them a forgotten one, eager to return to the surface. In World of Warcraft Wrath of the Lich King, Ajol Narub was released in the form of two five-man dungeons, Ajol Narub and Ankahet the Old Kingdom. However, at one point in development it was intended to be an actual underground zone. In this video we will see how it has evolved through time and we will start by taking a look at the source material. Then we will go on to actually explore the unfinished zone which was intended to be Ajol Narub. And after that we will compare this original concept to what was eventually released. This is the evolution of Ajol Narub. Enjoy! The ancient shattered kingdom of Ajol Narub lies deep below us. Though it has fallen on dark times, it could provide us a direct shortcut to the glacier. Towards the end of the Scourge campaign in Warcraft 3, Arthas is on a hurry to Icecrown. It is Anubarak who suggests they go through Ajol Narub, the fallen empire of the Nerubians. The journey spans the three parts of Chapter 7, into the Shadowweb Caverns, the Forgotten Ones and Ascent to the Upper Kingdom. The area is said to stretch for miles and the map suggests it spans beneath much, if not all, of Northrend. The environment is made up predominantly by granite, mixed with some igneous stone where volcanoes once rose and where magma from deep beneath bubbled up long ago. Ajol Narub can be divided into the Old Kingdom and the Upper Kingdom and is mostly controlled by the Scourge. Exceptions are pockets of Nerubian resistance, remnants of Muradin's dwarves and the ancient monsters known as the Faceless Ones. So the source material is this vast cavern spanning all across Northrend which contains the ruins of the fallen Nerubian Empire. And with this in mind we will see how it evolved in the world of Warcraft. Ajol Nerub as a zone has been mentioned by Blizzard a few times. In the Cataclysm post-mortem series, Ghostcrawler talked about the scrapping of Abyssal Maw. Here, he also said that while Abyssal Maw had potential, he was sadder about the cancellation of the Ashol Narub quest zone. Stockton had also said that buildings and temples would have looks very similar to Naxxramas, since the Scourge actually stole the architecture from the Nerubians. And some development actually went into this zone before it was scrapped. Now, of course, it is not even close to being finished, but that doesn't make it any less interesting to explore. It is a vast underground area with structures in the same style as Naxxramas, just as Stockton said. However, just like you can expect from these early development projects, the zone contains very few objects overall, and it's a fair guess that everything you see here is more or less placeholders. About one third of the area has a dome over it to create this subterranean feel. This is where most development time has been put in, so this is where we can get the best feel of what they were aiming for here. As you can see, there's this big abyss going through the entire place, with narrow bridges connecting the two sides. It is also around and above this abyss that all the structures are located. And there's only a handful of them, but all the buildings have textures both on the outside and on the inside. The green line you see here runs all around the zone, and it was probably one of the first things they ever did to the map. Think about the outlining around Taldronath, which they seem to have made to determine its shape. Then look at how Dragonblight and Wintergrasp used to look, and you will see that this seemed to be part of their design process. Take a look at the human scale models down below, and you will see just how big this area is. What you have in front of you is an untextured part of the cave. While we will never know for sure how this area would look if it was completed, the icy stalactites and running waterfalls suggest that it was supposed to be different from the rest of the zone. 
Look closely in this footage and you will also see some crystallized fungi on the ground. And of course, this might be placeholders, but it does correspond to the type of vegetation we are expecting to find in a genre rube. So it could be the first step to achieving something like what we see in the Old Kingdom. But one thing that really intrigues me with this area is this one single tree that grows deep down on the ground. And through a crack in the roof, a stream of light shines on it, as a small reminder of the world up on the surface. Of all the areas we have explored in Ajolnirub so far, this is without a doubt the one that piques my interest the most. So if the size of this leveling zone has not amazed you until now, let me refer back to what I said earlier. The dome which created the subterranean illusion only covered about one third of the zone so far, and that's being generous. If we follow the entire green line to see just how big a Jolnarub was supposed to be, we soon realize this might have been intended to be the biggest zone of Northern. Now, I strongly believe that if this zone would have been released, they would have shrunk it down. The Jolnarub instance is quite decent in size and that still fits into this zone 15 times over easily. Alright, now we have some understanding of their original concept for Ajolnirub, so let's move ahead and talk about what was actually released. When the leveling zone was scrapped, Ajolnirub was redesigned into two dungeons. The first one was simply called Ajolnirub and was targeted to level 72 to 74 players. The area is controlled by the Scourge, under the leadership of Anubarak himself. He is the last of three bosses, the other two being Krikthir the Gatewatcher and Hadronox. In the quest Proof of Demise Anubarak, this section is actually called the Upper City. In addition, the actual map file is called Ajol Upper City. This may all refer to the Upper Kingdom and we can assume that this is what the instance is meant to represent. The second dungeon is Ankahet, the Old Kingdom, which is intended for the level range 73 to 75. This is a huge underground city, which now serves as the home to the remnants of the Nerubian Empire. Here, these remnants fight the minions of the Lich King and the servants of the Old Gods for control. It has four bosses in total, five if you play it on Heroic, Elder Nadox, Prince Taldaram, Yedoga Shadowseeker, Herald Volash, and on Heroic, a Manitar. Ajolnirub also makes an appearance within the Raid Trial of the Crusader, which becomes the evidence that the area stretches beneath the entire continent of Northern. Here, players have to face off against Anubarak one last time, as he has been resurrected once more by the Lich King. So if you ask me, the Ajolnirub dungeons are some of the most beautiful places not only in Wrath of the Lich King, but the entire World of Warcraft. The architecture looks stunning, the lightning is beyond anything we have seen before or since, and it is one of those places which really have unlimited potential. That being said, I really think they missed some of that potential when they did not make this into an entire zone. Just imagine if you could have gone beneath Northrun when you leveled up and see this place finished with the art and aesthetics of the dungeons. One of my favorite zones is Deep Hole, and I can only imagine this being just as good or even better. Ajolnirub is also a really iconic place from the Warcraft RTS games and could have given a lot of interesting questing. Remember, the Chapter 7 Part 2 of Warcraft 3 was named The Forgotten Ones and Arthas only killed a single one. So we could have found a lot of scary stuff down here if we only had been able to unlock the full potential of it. At least that's what I think. But let me know what you think in the comments down below. Would you have rather have this as a leveling zone or are you happy with having it as two dungeons? And as usual, if you liked the video give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And speaking of which, thank you so much for 20,000 subscribers. This week have been absolutely crazy, in just a few days we have passed 18,000, then 19,000 and now 20,000. So a big thank you, I am really overwhelmed by that. I will be back with a new video very soon, 
and until then, take care.